A tight fit for this blue whale, your right to be forgotten, and the lost art of changing a flat tire. I'm Afan Chaudhary. Welcome to Globe Now. It was always going to be a massive undertaking, but a new development suggests the efforts to transport a 23-meter-long, 100-ton blue whale from Newfoundland to Ontario was bigger than ever imagined. The Royal Ontario Museum said it would take the stinky whale off the hands of Trout River residents, but on Wednesday morning, there was a slight hiccup. This is the jaw of the blue whale, and it doesn't quite fit into the transport container. The museum team has been regularly tweeting pictures, and the ones from the head of the whale are something to behold. The skull of the whale is broad, flat, and long, and as you can see, it's much bigger than a human or smart car. Getting the whale ready for transportation has been messy and laborious. That means you won't see this guy hanging in the museum anytime soon. Here's why. The first stage involves removing skin and blubber and burying that in landfills before loading the skeletons onto containers. Once the whale skeleton arrives in Ontario, the bones will be buried in soil manure for one year to help get rid of whatever flesh that remains. And then they'll try to get the oil off the bones by soaking them in water for up to two years. It's only then, at least three years later, that the whale remains will be ready for display. Until then, the adventure continues. Now stay with us. Up next, should Google respect your right to be forgotten? A court ruling says yes. Call it a win for individual privacy. In a landmark case, the European Court of Justice ruled that Google must remove some information from search results if a person demands it. Well, Omar al is the Globe's technology reporter. He joins me now via Skype from Portland. Welcome, Omar. Thank you. So first, can you walk me through this and how it would work? Let's say I Google my name and I find something I don't like or something that is no longer relevant. What can I do at that point? So basically, if you if you live in Canada or you live in the U.S., you live in most of the world, you can't do much. If the content is legal, you really can't do much about it. Um, in Europe, the top court in Europe has now decided that you can, in fact, go to Google and say, this information is no longer relevant, uh, please take it down, and Google has to comply. So basically, you now have veto rights over some of the content that shows up when anybody searches for your name on Google. And when we are talking about content specifically, give me some examples. So the court sort of limited itself to, to a certain set of things, but that set is still very broad. Hmm. So what they said is that this content has to be uh, dated, it has to be uh, irrelevant now. So basically, you have to be able to make the argument um, that the data that's reflected in the search results is not the kind of person you are currently. You can say, you know, this data reflects who I used to be, uh, but now it is no longer relevant to the person I am, uh, and so please take it down. So what are we talking about, Omar? Are we talking about those kind of high school photos and, and videos we'd all rather forget? Is that the kind of stuff we're talking about? Apparently it is, because it's a really strange ruling. It actually dates from a court case um, that a Spanish man brought forward where he said, look, when people search for my name, they get links to a Spanish newspaper article about my home that was foreclosed on and sent to auction to pay my debts. Mm -hmm. And he found this to be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, this issue was settled a long time ago. It shouldn't reflect the search results you get for my name right now. Um, the only problem is that this is historical record. I mean, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be able to go to the newspaper and say, look, you need to take this out of your archives because this isn't the person I am anymore. Mm. But with Google, he can actually go and do exactly that. Omar, what is the most important consequence of this ruling in your view? The most important consequence is that Europe's top court has essentially said that it's now okay to shoot the messenger. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, this doesn't just apply to sites like Google. I mean, clearly the case now uh, is, is limited to Google, but any major website is effectively a search engine. Facebook is a search engine. Twitter is a search engine. Um, and what this ruling says is that those websites can no longer say, look, we're just a middleman. We just bring you content that other people have created. Now suddenly they're responsible for that content, which means you have to do one of two things if you're Google now. Either you create a massive internal bureaucracy to test every claim that you get to make sure that it's actually you know, irrelevant content, dated content, and so on, or you just say, look, we're going to avoid this entirely and we're just going to, by default, every time we get a takedown notice from somebody, we're just going to do it so that we avoid headaches, we avoid fights in the mm. court, and so on, which is just a huge problem. 
Omar, just in 15 seconds, what is Google going to do, do you think? Well, they can't appeal. This is the top court in Europe, so there's no court for them to appeal to. I think what they're going to do is launch a massive PR campaign to try and convince people that this is bad for the Internet. Mm. Usually when Google comes out with some kind of you know, claim about something new they're doing, they say this is really good for the Internet. I think they're going to come out and say this is really bad for the Internet. Interesting, Omar. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on the privacy ruling? Do you think the right to be forgotten is important in the digital age? You can find us on Twitter at Globe Now. Well, one way to get a bit of privacy is to head out into the wilderness on a road trip. But what happens if you get a flat tire and you're out of cell phone range, something that would probably happen to me? Have no fear. The Globe's Peter Cheney teaches you how to change a tire. What if you're out of range of CAA or your cell phone is dead or you're on a back road? A lot of drivers today don't actually know how to change a tire. It's a good skill, plus it gives you street cred. It's best if the car is on level ground. If there's any slope at all, I recommend that you put a chalk under the wheels. The spare tire and the tools will be under the floor of the trunk. This is a temporary wheel. You don't want to drive as fast as you would with the regular wheel. And there's the jack itself. Now this car has Wheel covers right here, they have to be removed. And now we see what we're up against. These five bolts here have to be undone. With this tool, the lug wrench. Loosen these slightly before you raise the car. It's a lot easier when the car is on the ground. Now we're ready to raise the car. Put it in park, put on the parking brake. You need to put the jack under what's called a jacking point, otherwise you can damage your car's body. As the jack starts to lift the weight of the car, it gets a little tougher. So I'll start assembling my jack. And all I want to do is get it just high enough to get the wheel off the ground. There. Now you're going to see why I loosened these nuts before I raised the car. If I had to do it here, the car would move. But since we were geniuses and loosened them before we raised the car, it's really easy. And now the wheel's ready to come off. There's five studs, five holes. Pretty simple. You line it up like that. And now you put on the nuts. Before I drop the car back down, I want to cinch down these nuts in a star pattern. I want to go from here to here to here to here and there. There we go. Now the car is ready to lower again. We undo the jack. And we're done. We changed the tire. Now you are truly self-sufficient. Okay, well that's it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. If you've got a moment, hop onto Twitter and tell us what you think about the Google ruling. Do you think people should have the right to be forgotten online? And how about that blue whale? What part of the process intrigues you the most? You can find us at Globe Now. I'm Afan Jodhri. Thanks again for watching.